The next key figures in Augustus's succession plans we're going to look at are his daughter Julia and his friend Agrippa. So the key questions are, number one, why was Julia important to Augustus's succession plans? Number two, what role did Agrippa play in his plans? Number three, what did Agrippa leave to the Roman Empire? And number four, what were the consequences of Julia's scandalous behaviour? So we'll just start off by introducing Julia. So she was the only biological child that Augustus ever had. Um, and her mother was Scribonia, Augustus's second wife. Um, and he divorced her to marry Livia the day that Julia was born, or the day after she was born. Um, so she, um, she was used to form a number of different political alliances and, um, and for a number of different political ends. So for example... The marriage of Julia and Marcellus from 25 to 23 BC did not produce any offspring. Um, and then afterwards, um, he married um, Julia to Agrippa to try and produce male, a male heir. So despite the age difference, um, she was about 17 and he was about 40 when they got married. Um, their marriage produced five children. So... Um, sons Gaius and Lucius Caesar, um, a daughter Julia, also known as Julia the Younger, Agrippina, and Agrippa Posthumus, and you'll remember that he was born after the death of his father. Um, and um, the Emperor Augustus ended up adopting the two boys, Gaius and Lucius, as his own children, so he effectively chose Agrippa and his sons as his successor. So Agrippa, um, who is one of Augustus's best friends, um, was born in 63 BC to a common family and he was seen as a potential successor after Marcellus's death. Um, he and Augustus had been best friends since childhood. They went to school together um, and Agrippa was an extremely successful military commander and he was the principal director of the naval war against Sextus Pompeius as well as the Battle of Actium. Um, after Marcellus died, Augustus fell very ill. This was right before the second settlement took place. Um, and believing he was about to die, he gave Agrippa his signet ring, which suggests that he might have um, had him as, in mind as a successor. Later on in 18 BC, um, Agrippa was given proconsular imperium for five years, as well as tribunician power. So this made him effectively equal to Augustus, although his octoritas was lesser. Um, and this power meant that should Augustus die, Agrippa could step in as regent until Gaius was old enough to succeed him. In 13 BC, the tribunician power was extended for another five years, and his um, proconsular imperium was made maios, so equal to that of Augustus. Um, however, his death in 12 BC in Campania in southern Italy left the succession question open again. Um, so the boys Gaius and Lucius weren't old enough to rule by themselves should something happen to Augustus, and so this could lead to a power struggle. Um, Agrippa's a really, really important figure um, because he left a lot of things to Rome um, and the Roman Empire. So, for example, um, we've got buildings like the Pantheon, um, the Aqua Julia and Aqueduct and baths and granaries in Rome, the Pont du Gard in southern France, a big aqueduct, the Odeon, which was a theatre in Greece. Um, and he also, when he died, left his garden and baths, um, big complexes to the people of Rome. Um, he left his other legacy, his other lands to Augustus, um, who made them public, and he gave the people 400 sesterces each in the name of Augustus. Um, and he was buried in the mausoleum of Augustus along with his family. So we'll just look at a few pictures of um, things that Agrippa has left behind. So this, um, I'm sure many of you will recognise, is the Pantheon, a, a big sort of domed temple in Rome. Um, it was rebuilt later on, um, but then in the... Um, in the Latin there you can see M. Agrippa, so Marcus Agrippa LF stands for Luci Fili, Filius, so the son of Lucius. Um, cos tertium facit, so cos stands for consul, tertium for the third time, facit made this. Um, so it's 
showing that he dedicated this temple. Here is the aqueduct, the Pont du Gard, in the southern France. It's really beautiful, um, so hopefully you'll get a chance to visit it. And here are the remains of the Odeon in Athens. Um, on a slightly different note, we shall move to have a look at um, the disgrace of Julia. So after um, Agrippa died in 12 BC, Julia was married off to Tiberius, um, Augustus's stepson. But it was a very unhappy marriage. Um, he was forced to dis divorce his pregnant wife and he was in love with her. And um, he kind of effectively ignored Julia. So she ended up having a lot of affairs. Um, she was found to have committed adultery in 2 BC. Um, it was a big public scandal. And especially since it violated the morality reforms which Augustus had brought in. And we're going to look at those in more detail in a couple of topics time. So he was trying to bring back family values, uh, values to Rome. And the scandal is his own daughter is the one that's breaking these laws. So as well as the scandal, it also kind of causes humiliation to him very publicly. Um, so she ended up being banished to an island. So she had to leave Rome. She was the only one who ended up being punished under his adultery laws. And she was later joined by her daughter, Julia the Younger, who committed the same sorts of crimes. Um, so make sure you've got the answers to the key questions. So why Julia was important to Augustus's succession plans and the role Agrippa played in these plans, what Agrippa left to the Roman Empire, and what the consequences were of Julia's scandalous behaviour. So we'll discuss these in class.